You ain't from the village. You're from the upworld, ain't you? Yes. You've got credits, I bet. Watch yourself. There's something slimy about this guy. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. My name's Saigir. I run a little salvage shop here. You want to buy something from my store? I got some good deals. If a villager comes across any useful salvage in the Undercity, they bring it to me. Every so often, members from the lower city gangs come down to trade for the salvage. They'll exchange food and medicine for engine parts, old blasters and the like. Sometimes they even give me credits if I have some really good stuff. Oh, you better ask Gendar. He's the spokesman for the village. I just run the store. I don't want to make him mad by answering any questions. Gendar already doesn't like me. Gendar seems to think I should share the profits of my store with the whole village. He figures we're all in this together, so it should be share and share alike. But I'm the one who runs the store. I'm the one who makes the deals. The others just bring me salvage to trade with the upworlders. Why should they get anything? He caught me hoarding supplies a while back. I figured I'd wait until food was scarce and then I could offer it to people who'd follow me instead of Gendar. Then I'd be the leader. But Gendar made me share my hoard. Ever since then, he hasn't trusted me. He keeps me around because of my store, though. Without it, this village wouldn't stand a chance. It ain't the best stuff. Mostly salvage and such, but the prices are right. Hello again. I'm glad you came back. It's kind of neat to speak to someone from the surface world. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, okay. Well, if you ever need anything, or if you just feel like talking, come back and see me. I hardly ever get a chance to speak to someone from the upworld. You! You come from the world above! Is this the time of destiny, then? Is this a portent of the salvation of my people? Or merely another false sign to mislead us from the path? Are you the herald of prophecy? The beacon to guide us through the darkness? Or are you merely another harbinger of shattered dreams and unfulfilled promises? Be careful. This one might be crazy enough to be dangerous. Speak to me, Upworlder. Tell me what fate you unleash upon us. Salvation or damnation? Speak, Upworlder, I beg you! A question. You are uncertain, bewildered, perplexed. Understandable, I suppose. Even after a hundred years of life, I myself still become confused at times. Perhaps I can make things more clear. Some things, at least. My name is Rukil. The oldest outcast here in the village. Rukul Wrinkleskin, the children call me sometimes. Once, I was honored for my wisdom. But over time, the villagers fell away from the true path. Eventually, there was only a single apprentice who followed me. And now she is gone, too. My apprentice is... lost. I sent her out into the Undercity to find... Well, I cannot tell you. Not yet. Sadly, my apprentice has not returned. Please, Upworlder, will you help an old man? Will you seek out my apprentice in the Undercity? Her name is Malia. I must know of her fate, whatever it may be. I must know what she found. Finding her may be difficult. Malia could be anywhere in the Undercity. But if you will find her, I will know you to be our true savior. Only then can I reveal my secret knowledge to you. 
I wish you luck, Upworlder. Come speak to me again once you have discovered the fate of my apprentice. Greetings, Upworlder. We rarely see your kind here in the Undercity. I find it strange that so many of you have come down from the surface recently. No offense, but I can see why people normally avoid this place. Why have you come into this dark and sunless place? Is there something you need of me or my village? I will help you however I can. We are the outcasts, shunned from the surface for our crimes and banished here to the Undercity. We banded together to form this village that we might survive in this hostile environment. I am Gendar, leader of this village, as my father was and as was his father before him. Many of us have been here for generations, our ancestors cast down long ago. There is no return to the surface for us or our descendants, but somehow we managed to survive amidst the filth and roaming bands of deadly Rakuls. The Rakuls are monsters, hideous mutations who feast on the flesh of our villagers. Their diseased jaws can infect those they attack, transforming the victim into one of those abominations. We know of no cure for the disease, and for the good of the village, we must banish any who become infected, lest they transform and turn on us. Ask your questions, Upworlder. I will answer to the best of my knowledge, though I know little beyond the borders of the Undercity. Yes, I have seen this Twi'lek many times, though I've never spoken to her. She and her Wookiee companion often pass through our village on their way to explore the sewers. There are two entrances into the sewers from the Undercity. One to the northeast of our village, the other to the southeast. But the sewers are dangerous, Upworlder. If you dare to travel those dark tunnels, you would be wise to go heavily armed, unless you wish to become a meal for the Rakuls and the other foul creatures. Ask your questions, Upworlder. I will answer to the best of my knowledge, though I know little beyond the borders of the Undercity. Our village has seen many visitors from the surface recently. Armored troops, swoop gang members, mercenaries. They come to search our sunless world. They're even searching the sewers. There are two entrances into the sewers from the Undercity. One to the northeast of our village, the other to the southeast. But the sewers are dangerous, Upworld. If you dare to travel those dark tunnels, you would be wise to go heavily armed, unless you wish to become a meal for the rock ghouls and the other foul creatures. Ask your... As you wish, Upworlder. Should you have need of anything else, come speak to me. I represent the entire village and I will do my best to help you however I can. Wait, Upworlder. You can't go through this gate. There is too much danger and suffering beyond. For your own sake, turn back. The villagers infected with the Rakgul disease are quarantined beyond this gate. It's only a matter of time until they transform into horrible creatures that would destroy us all. So you just lock them away in a cage? For the sake of the village, we have to keep the infected ones locked away. And when they finally do transform into Rakguls, we'll let them destroy each other. Nothing can be done for the infected villagers. Even the serum to counteract the Rakgul disease wouldn't be any use now. Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The infected ones could transform into Rakguls and attack them at any moment.
I can't stop you from going through the gates, Upworlder. But if the infected ones have already transformed into ruck ghouls, you'll be walking into your grave. Back again? If you have... But despite my medical training, there is nothing I can do to help the poor souls locked on the other side of this gate. The villagers infected with the ruck ghoul disease are quarantined... So you just lock them away in a cage? For the sake of the village, we have to keep the infected ones locked away. And when they finally do transform into ruck ghouls, we'll let them destroy each other. Nothing can be done. Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The Farewell. There, Upworlder. You want to see what I got for sale in my inventory? Or do you need something else? Oh, you better ask Gendar. He's the spokesman for the village. I just... Yeah, okay. You come back and see me if you want a deal. He'll never make it. He's doomed. Ugh. I told him he was a fool to leave the village. He will make it. Run, Hindar, run! Open the gate! Quickly! There isn't much time! Uh, I... I can't. The Rackles are too close. The mutants will kill him if you don't open the gate! And if I open the gate, they'll kill us all! No! You can't do this! It isn't fair! Please, make him open the gate. Hindar will die if he doesn't. I can't open the gate. Not while the Rat Ghouls are so near. You'd risk your life for a stranger? <laughs> You're brave, Upworlder. I'll open the gate for you, but you gotta be quick. In a few seconds, I must close and lock it again. Time to rumble! can't thank you enough for saving me, Upworlder. If I had anything but these rags on my back, it would be yours. But we have nothing. I still have you, Hindar. That's all I need. Let's go back to the village. Thank you for saving Hindar. You are braver than I, Upworlder. Maybe we outcasts have lived too long in selfish fear. Perhaps we can learn a lesson from your brave actions. <laughs> But enough of my ramblings. Is there something you need, Upworlder? I'm Trewin, from the Outcast Village. It's my job to guard the gates and see they are locked to protect us from the Rat Ghouls. <laughs> I just guard the gates. Gendar is the leader of the village, Upworlder. You should speak to him if you have any questions. Goodbye, Upworlder. Hello again. I'm glad you came back. It's kind of neat to speak to someone from the surface world. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, okay. Well, if you ever need anything, or if you just feel like talking, come back and see me. I hardly ever get a chance to speak to someone from the upworld.
Welcome back, Upworlder. I'm surprised to see you again. Many of your kind have passed through our village recently, but few have bothered to speak with me or my people. Why have you come into this dark and sunless place? Is there something you need of me or my village? I will help you however I can. As you wish up. Back again? Is there something else you need? He's in trouble. Big trouble. We have to help him. If we don't, they'll sell him into slavery. Me, me and Zalbar, we were just wandering around here in the Undercity. You know, looking for stuff we could find, just kind of exploring. We do it all the time. I guess with a Wookiee at your side, you've got to figure you can handle the odd Rack Ghoul attack. Only this time, they were waiting for us. Gamorian slave hunters. We didn't even have a chance to run. Big Z threw himself at him and then roared for me to run. I, d I took off. I figured Zalbar would be right behind me. But there were too many of them. He couldn't get away. They're going to sell him to a slaver, I just know it. I don't know for sure, but those Gamorians like to hang out in the sewers. The stink reminds them of home, I guess. That's probably where they took Big Z. No way. I'm the one that got Zabar into this mess, so I'm coming with you. I'm not going to abandon him again. I can't ask Gadden. He's always telling me not to go into the Undercity. He says it's too dangerous with the Rat Ghouls and Gamorians and all. He'll never send his Bex down there. It's a deal. As soon as we get Big Z back, I'll show you a way into that Volker base. Now come on! We have to find Zalba before they sell him to slavers, or worse! Do you know where he's being kept? The Gamorians make their camps in the sewers. I bet that's where we'll find Zalbar. And that's where I'll show you the secret entrance into the Volker compound.
Sure. Please, I, I can feel it inside my skin. Something growing, like some kind of hideous disease. No! No! I can feel it! I'm not afraid to use this blaster if I have to. Settle down, kid. We've already lost enough men to those damn rack ghouls. The last thing we need now is more casualties from a needless firefight. Mm. By the looks of you, I'd say you're down here for the same reason we are. To salvage something from those downed Republic space pods. Let me give you some advice. Forget about it. Do yourself a favor and just head back from where you came. Mandalorians don't make threats. We make promises, but I'm just trying to give you a friendly warning. This isn't a good place to stand around chatting. The Undercity is crawling with rat ghouls. I've already lost a half a dozen men to those monsters. Candrus, I heard something. Over there, in the shadows. Sounded like a rat ghoul. Looks like we've got company. Get those blasters ready, boys. I told Davik this salvage mission was a bad idea. His men aren't trained for this kind of thing, and I can't babysit them all. Okay, boys. We're getting out of here before I lose anyone else. I can't carry all this salvage back by myself. You'd be smart to get out of here as well. Even if you can handle the rat ghouls, I doubt there's anything worth finding anymore. Normally, I'd make you regret those words, but I'm not wasting another minute down here. I'm responsible for this whole company, and they won't survive down here much longer. Come on, boys, let's move out! Ready. Sure.
Back again? Is there something else you... Greetings once more, Upworlder. Do you bring news of my apprentice? Have you discovered her fate and proved yourself to be a true savior of my people? It is as I feared, then. She joins the list of those who have given their lives in the service of our cause. But though I am saddened by this news, there is yet hope. By finding my apprentice, you have proved yourself worthy, Upworlder. You are to be the beacon on our path to salvation. You will guide us to the Promised Land. You are marked, Upworlder. Even my dim old eyes can see the mantle of destiny that cloaks you. Perhaps old Rukil knows you better than you know yourself. I am old. I have lived a hundred years in the Undercity, cast down into the darkness. I know the legends and history of our people, and now you must learn it too. The great city of Taris covers the entire surface of this planet. There is no land to grow food. Kelp harvests and the creatures of the sea are our only food source. A century ago, rising levels of toxic pollution poisoned the oceans and famine swept the planet. The rich hoarded food for their own use, and the poor were left to starve and die. From what I've seen of Terras, it doesn't look like much has changed. Except for the upper city, people here are just as bad off as the poor in your little history. But the poor rose up against this tyranny, and civil war engulfed the planet. Millions died in the fighting, and huge sections of Taurus were destroyed or abandoned. The rebellion was crushed in the end. Thousands were taken prisoner. The jails could not hold them all, and so the practice of banishing all prisoners to the Undercity was born. Many brave men and women were banished here to the Undercity for their part in the rebellion. People like my father and grandfather were cast down, along with their families. What did you expect? If they could get away with it, the Teresian nobles would stuff their own mothers down here to make more room in the Upper City. Now we live a dark existence beneath the streets of Terrace, a life devoid of all hope but one the Promised Land, and you will be the one to show us the way to get there.
Legends tell of a self-sufficient colony founded just before the famine and lost during the Civil War. A paradise beneath the Undercity where droid servants tend to every need. For many years I searched for the Promised Land, just as my grandfather and father did before me. When I became old and gray, my apprentice continued the search on my behalf. Sounds like a myth to me. Something to give the people here some false hope to cling to so they don't go mad with despair. I have collected many clues hinting at its location. The journal of my apprentice provides yet more information. But still, there are too many pieces missing from this puzzle. But I know my father and grandfather each had journals where they recorded their own discoveries. Perhaps with their journals, I could at last uncover its hidden location. Yes, Upworlder. Well done. However, I see that this journal alone does not have enough clues for me to solve this mystery. Too many pieces are still missing. I'm afraid that only with all three journals, my grandfather's, my father's, and my apprentice's, will I be able to discover the location of the Promised Land. I will leave this journal with you for safekeeping for now. Perhaps it will aid you in your search for the others. I wish you luck, Upworlder, for the sake of the entire village. I saw you talking with Rukul. He told you his legends about the Promised Land, didn't he? He told you all about his missing apprentice and the other lost explorers, right? You know, most people don't believe his stories. They figure he's nothing but an old cook. But I think there might be some truth in what he's saying. That's why I want to stop him. For an outcast, I've got things pretty good. The village relies on me to bring in food and supplies. I'm an important man. If it wasn't for Gendar, I'd be running this place. I get the feeling if it wasn't for Gendar, this place would be a lot worse off than it is. But if Rukul ever finds his promised land, I'm sunk. People won't need to rely on me anymore. I'll just be another nobody like all the rest of the villagers. I won't let that happen. Don't judge me. I learned a long time ago that if I want to survive down here, I've got to look out for number one. The two explorers who went searching for the Promised Land might have found something. They might have found clues or evidence, just like Rukul's apprentice. They would have recorded that information in their journals. I'll pay you if you bring all three journals to me. The two from the explorers and the one from Rukul's apprentice. Then... I can destroy the evidence and make sure nobody ever finds the promised land. I've saved up enough credits for my business here to make it worth your while if you help me. Don't be a fool! I'm the only one here who can pay you for those journals. Rukil has nothing. He won't be able to come up with any kind of reward. Once you have all three journals, just bring them to me and I'll give you a decent reward. Now. Was there something else you needed? Yeah, okay. You'll come back and see me if you want a deal.
Walker steps on this, we'll get a nasty shock. Whoever steps on this, we'll get a nasty shock.
Whoever steps on this will get a nasty shock. <laughs> can I do for you? Really? You want to know about me? Nobody's ever really been interested in me before. What do you want to know? Big Z's my family, you know? My parents, well, I guess they're dead. It was just me on my own until the day I saw Zalbar in the lower city. I could tell right away he was in trouble. This was before the gang wars were out of hand. But even then, the Volkers were scum. A few of them were hassling Big Z, trying to pick a fight, but he wasn't looking for trouble. Hey, nobody said the Volkers were smart, but there were three of them, so maybe they figured they could handle him. I don't know. Anyway, I don't like the Volkers at the best of times, and when I saw them picking on this poor Wookiee, all alone on a strange planet, overwhelmed by the big city, I just lost it. I screamed out, Leave him alone, you core slimes! And charged right at them. Well, one of them saw me coming and slapped me so hard he just about knocked me cold. Hey, don't treat me like I'm a little girl. I ain't no kid. I'm 14 years old. Those Volkers didn't scare me. They're nothing but cowards. I knew how to deal with them. Of course, I never got the chance. I guess Zalbar didn't like seeing me get smacked around. He let out this howl? and yanked that Volker a meter up off the ground and held him there by his throat. The other two screamed and ran off. Can't say I blame them. The first time you see an angry Wookiee up close, it isn't a pretty sight. I thought Zalbar was gonna rip that punk's arms off and beat him to death with his own fists. The Volker was so scared, he fainted. Or maybe it was Big Z's breath just knocked him out. I keep telling Zabar to brush those choppers of his, but he never listens. Just stay upwind when he's speaking and you'll be fine. Anyway, I knew those Volkers would be back with friends, so I grabbed Zabar and we took off. Ever since then, we've been a team. We look out for each other, you know? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You think I can't take care of myself? I've got street smarts. I know how to get by on my own. In fact, I look out for Zalbar more than he looks out for me, you know? Big Z's a little bit too gullible to make it alone on the mean streets of the lower city. He was fleeing some kind of trouble back on Kashyyyk. That's all I know, really. Big Z doesn't like to talk about it. In case you didn't notice, he's the strong, silent type. Doesn't much matter to me, though. I accept him for what he is, not what he was. Me and Zalbar like to live in the present. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Like I used to tell my brother, fast talk and slick words don't get the job done. My brother's a touchy subject, you know. It just so happens, I don't really feel like talking about him right now. Nothing personal. Let's just get back to the business at hand, okay?
Hey there. What can I do for you? I, I was a little snappish when we last talked. I'm sorry about that. I get a little touchy when it comes to Griff. It's kind of embarrassing telling people about him. No, I, I want to tell you. Salbar's a great listener, but it might be nice to talk about this with someone who doesn't reply in growls and grunts. I never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me here to Tars. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in the Starfighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? I don't know the whole story. I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves out. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Without my brother, I don't know where I'd be. He gambled and drank, and he was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive. He showed me how to slice into a computer security system, how to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes, and how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Yeah, Griff did right by me. I really miss him since he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. He promised me he would. He fell in with a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him and off he went. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. Subjects closed, as far as I'm concerned. If I'm gonna be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? Terrace is a pretty good place to grow up, all things considered. Just stick to the area you belong in, and stay out of Davik's business, and you'll be fine. The Upper City's got some nice shops and all, but it's boring. The only time I go up there is if I need free healing from Zelka at his medical facility. What can I say? The Lower City was a great place to hang out until the Volkers started that gang war. Now you can't even walk the streets without getting shot at. It can be pretty nasty down there. You've got rat ghouls crawling around looking for their next meal. And the Gamorrean slavers like to set up their bases in the sewers. And then there's the Outcast Village, a collection of people banished to the Undercity for their crimes. I mostly avoid the village, though. It's pretty depressing to see how they live. I tend to keep my nose out of an intergalactic crime lord's business, you know? I can't tell you much that isn't common knowledge. Extortion, slavery, smuggling. Davik's got a piece of all the action here on Terrace. Even the swoop gang's no better than to get in his way. Hey, no problem. I'm here to help, right?
You're a pilot for the Republic, right? You've been all over the galaxy, I bet, right? So tell me, how would you rate Taurus compared to other worlds you've seen? To be honest, Mission, Terrace would rate pretty low. Prejudice, rich spoiling themselves while the poor are crushed beneath them. It's not a pretty picture. Yeah, but that's only since the Sith occupation. Before that, well, I guess it wasn't all that different, really. Hmm. Maybe Taurus ain't as great as I thought, you know? Trust me, Mission, there are a lot of worlds better than Terrace. There, there are worse, too, but Terrace is no place for a kid to live on a own. Even a kid who's got a Wookiee to look out for. Hey, I ain't no kid. I look out for Zalbar as much as he looks out for me. Big C's my friend, not my babysitter. Geez, I come ask you a question, you give me a lecture. Don't you snap at me, Missy. You want a lecture? How's this? Only bratty little children fly off the handle because of a simple comment. I don't have to listen to you, Karth. You ain't my father, though you're sure old enough to be. So keep your lectures inside your withered old head, because I don't need them. And I sure as hell don't need this. Let's just drop it and get back to what we were doing. What are you doing? Don't go in there! That door is for employees only! You, you recognize these soldiers? But how? Unless... unless you're a friend of the Republic. I, uh... I guess I'd better tell you what's going on. I only hope the Sith don't find out what I've done. Since the space battle overhead, people have been secretly bringing in these Republic soldiers who've crash-landed on the planet. I had to take them in. What choice did I have? Their injuries are terrible. Most won't survive. But at least I can make their last days more comfortable. And at least here, they're hidden away from the Sith. Well, for that you have my thanks. It's good to know that at least some of these men ended up in compassionate hands. I hate to imagine what the Sith would do if they discovered these soldiers here. But since their initial questioning, the Sith have not returned, so it may be my fears are unfounded. I'm afraid there's nothing more anyone can do for these soldiers. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should return to the front in case anyone comes in needing medical attention. Welcome back. Are you in need of healing or medical supplies? I can treat you right here at the center for almost any condition, except the Rakul disease, of course. You have the serum? Impossible! How did you get this? No, wait, I don't really want to know. Can... can I see it? The serum, I mean? I need to see if there is enough for me to analyze it so I can start producing it in mass quantities. Hmm, let me see... Yes, this is it! A cure for the Rakgul disease! With this sample, I can make enough serum for everyone! The people of Terrace owe you a debt they can never repay. Please, take this small reward. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. A few credits and two spare med packs. I appreciate everything you've done. There are many who would have sold the serum to the crime lord Davik for a much higher sum. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Now, this is a hospital of sorts. Though my resources are quite limited since the Sith quarantined the planet, I provide basic medical services to all citizens of and visitors to Terrace. Of course, just step over here and I'll show you what I have in stock. My you blew it! If you'd brought that Rakul serum to Zax, you would have made it worth your while. No, you had to go and do the honorable thing. You blew it! If you'd brought that Rakul serum to Zax, you would have made it worth your while. No, you had to go and do the honorable thing.
Uh, hey, Karth. Can I, can I talk to you for a second? Are you ready to have a civil chat? Or is this going to be another childish tantrum? Tantrum? I'm trying to apologize, you nerf herder. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get mad at you. It's just that I'm sick of everyone treating me like I'm a helpless kid. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm sorry about what I said, too. I'm just a little on edge lately. Not surprising, considering all we've been through. But I shouldn't take it out on you. Mission, you have to know that we don't think you're helpless. I mean, look where we are. Look at what we're doing. You're not just along for the ride. We need you. You really mean it, don't you? Nobody's ever said anything like that to me before. Not even Big Z. He might think it, but he's not really one for words, you know. Thanks, Carth. Well, it's no big deal. I, mean, I know it is. Sometimes you just need to hear a few words of encouragement. Kids are like that. Kids are like that? Listen, you... <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, you got me. You're pretty funny, Car, for an old guy. Come on, geezer. Let's get back to what we were doing. walks among us. The enemy is here. It pains me to see that an alien lover such as yourself is still allowed to walk free. I've seen how the Sith operate. I know they will support my anti-alien policies. When the day of reckoning comes, you will suffer with the rest of the scum and alien lovers. Hear that, laser brain? Sell it somewhere else, because we ain't buying. You are like all the rest. You will not see the truth. On the day of reckoning, you will suffer with the rest of the alien lovers. Come on, we should keep moving. Cook or no, people like him can make trouble for us. Back again? Is there something else you need? Your offer is generous, Upworlder, but the serum is useless to us now. The villagers infected with the Rat Ghoul disease have been quarantined beyond this gate. At any moment, they could be transformed into terrible monsters. Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The infected ones could transform into Rat Ghouls and attack them at any moment. I can't stop you from going through the gates, Upworlder, but if the infected ones have already transformed into Ruck Ghouls, you'll be walking into your grave. Please, help us! We're infected with the Rat Ghoul disease! At any moment we could... Uh, no! This cannot... No! 
We beg you. We don't want to end up like the others. Please help us. We can't end up like them. You... you have a cure? Please give it to me, please, quickly, before it's too late. Quickly, I must inject it before it is too late. Yes, I feel it working. I feel the disease burning away. It... it's like a miracle. I am cured. Thank you, Upworlder. You have saved us from a fate worse than death. I only wish I had some reward to give you. Maybe you can find something worthwhile in the wreckage of that Republic escape pod. Not long ago, an escape pod crashed in the Undercity, far to the northeast of the village. We were going to try and salvage equipment from it, but we were attacked by the rat ghouls and infected. I'd tell you more if I could, but our salvage team never reached the pod. It's probably still there, unless some of the other Upworlders already found it and picked it clean. We should go now, Upworlder. We're anxious to return to the village and see our families again. Thank you once again for everything you've done. You amaze me. I always thought the surface dwellers couldn't care less about us outcasts. But you risked everything to help those infected villagers. I wish I had some type of reward to give you, but we outcasts have nothing. All I can offer is the gratitude of the entire village. <laughs> You have done a great thing for my village, Upworlder. Few from the surface would bother to cure an outcast of the Rakul disease as you have done. My only regret is that I have no reward to give you for your aid. Save my thanks and the thanks of my people. As you wish, Upworlder. Should you have need of anything else, come speak to me. I represent the entire village and I will do my best to help you however I can. I saw you talking with Rukia. It's nice of you to help him. Though I don't want to get my hopes up. I mean, the promised land. <laughs> How could it be true? It's just that sometimes Rukia seems so certain. And then you show up, just like the upworld savior from the legends. If Rukia's right, this could be a whole new life for the village. No more Rakul attacks. No more starvation. <sighs> I shouldn't get my hopes up. Not yet. But... But I will wish you good luck, on behalf of the entire village.
Whoever steps on this will get a nasty shock.
हाँ यस
You amaze me. I always thought the surface dwellers couldn't care less about us outcasts. But you risked everything to help those infected villagers. I wish I had some type of reward to give you, but we outcasts have nothing. All I can offer is the gratitude of the entire village. Welcome back, Upworlder. How goes your quest? Have you found the journals of my father and grandfather? Can it be true? Is it possible that at long last, the dream of my father and grandfather before him will be fulfilled? I, I can hardly bear to look. Hmm. Yes, yes, of course. Now I understand. It all makes sense. Now I see why the Promised Land has been so hard to find. It is so obvious. You have done a great thing, Upworlder. A selfless act that will bring great joy to all the people of this village. I must take this to Gendar right away. Frukil, what do you want now? Have you more fables of a hidden paradise just waiting for us to find it? You may not think these are fables after you see what I have brought you, Gendar. Look at these journals! What? No, it can't be. Are these real, Rukil? Is this information accurate? I swear to you, everything in these journals is true, Gendar. The Promised Land. I told you I would find it. The entrance is far from here, Rukil. It will take us weeks to get there, perhaps even months. And we will have to cross many Rakul-infested areas. I do not deny the journey will be hard, Gendar. But surely it is better than the miserable life we have here. Wise words, Rukil. Our supplies are high right now. We could leave by nightfall. I will tell the others to prepare for the journey. Thank you once again, Upworlder. I will say a final goodbye. For where we are going, I fear you cannot come. The journey to the Promised Land is long and arduous. No, Upworlder, I cannot ask that. The journey will take many, many weeks, and those who make the journey cannot return. That was the final secret of the Promised Land. When the colony was created, 
It was designed so that people could enter willingly, but they could never leave again. This was to ensure secrecy on the project. We must part ways here, Upworlder. I sense your destiny is yet to be chosen, but the destiny of my people is at the end of the long journey ahead of us. the energy fields unless you know the proper codes. Lucky for you, I've got them. I picked them off the pocket of a black Volker who had a little too much to drink in the cantina one night. Here, let me get that energy field down for you.
away.
Sure. serve the food here, that's all. I'm not like these others. I'm not even a black Volker. Please don't kill me. My name is Ada. My father owed Davik some money, but he couldn't pay. Davik killed my father and sold me into slavery here at the Volker compound to pay off the debt. But I don't know anything. I'm just a prisoner here, a slave. The Volkers don't tell me anything. They treat me like dirt. They beat me up if I screw up their orders. You may know more than you think, miss. Help us and we'll help you, okay? Well, all right. I still don't know how much help I can be, but I sure hope you get rid of all the Volkers. I hate them. What? I I've never heard of such a thing. I guess it might be in the garage on the lower level. That's where all the Volkers go to work on their swoop bikes, but I've never been down there. The elevator is protected by a security system. Only the Volkers are allowed to go down there. Is she that Republic soldier? I heard one of the Volker mention her, but she's not here. He said Brezhik didn't trust his men around her. I guess she's too important to be a slave here in the kitchens, getting pawed and groped and kicked and spit on like me. Brezhik must have taken her somewhere safe. Now that you've killed the guards who were supposed to watch me, I think I could find my way out of here. I I'm free to go? You're not going to kill me? I, I don't know how I can ever repay you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to get out of here before any of the Volkers see me. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mamulira, King Kunjo Peshak, no Bamuliraji, Johnny Yuturunchi, we eat a dear. Ola una chinek, Bamulirat, Slimo Anga Kunbis King. Tonga Bugsham Uninong, Wanga Kunbis King, Bamulira, Johnny Yuntunji, I thought one, Kavavolpa Muljui, 
Kamana, takum just tak miki gravel mogo. Kachi chu ai thaudonga, tulpa da bonk molia gando da nago chuchut. Moga shapupa, bolawana chikni. Bamul ne slik mo poda na wanga kun beast muli rabest. Kachi chu ai thaudonga. In kin kuno bamuli rachi kun. Slima podona. Rundi hodonga kun honkabi. Takum justak miki gravel mogo. Kachi chu ai thaudonga. Tulpa da bonk molia gando da nago chuchut. Moga shampungpa. Bolawana chikni. Bamul ne slik mo poda na wanga kun beast muli rabest. Tong hai tuam jiji yumalith pa ang inkotu. Tulba da bunk walya gando da nago chuchut. Kachi chu ai tha haudunga. Yumalith ka inkotun. Jilo mulra de ne bobo. Munga kun biskang. Bamulara. Kachi chu ai tha haudunga. In kin kuno bamuli rachi kun. Slima podona. Rundi hodonga kun honkabi. Chibedwana ni bobo. Tonk nabung shanun yang. Tonk patoga smaktelia. Guya mi juz kachita. Nai patoga ya fulki kukula jiji. Kawana bota a ayut tagwa. Kanki dora di kun watati mana isabola. Tabistu bon konki pangpa. Jing palachis kamuli. Tuni rana no prata dunk no sarcha doma wama kun bestoma. Nisha jilo chakin kun no bamuli raji kun. Konti chani. Mulira ashonk turung umni patoga wanka chone tize. Ikraftuk hartu chichi ya. Watayuma ka wama huhanek. Konti chani. Mulira ashonk turung umni patoga wanka chone tize. Ikraftuk hartu chichi ya. What are you, Makawa Mahuhanek?
Time to rumble! Gita, nai patoga ya fulki kukula jiti. Kawana bota a ayut tagwa. Kanki dora ti kun watati mana isabola. Breshik stole that engine from Gaden. It was never yours to begin with. Kavatum pa kun pa yeya moka pata. Bona night kachu. Yin kin kuno ba muli rachi kun. Tong na bun shan yunyang. Wanna check Yongi? Wanna vota contitariti? Chichin toma tunka cola yame tua? Na 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 kanki chiki nai potoka. Na wanna pota. Kachichu aitha odunga. 
Inkin kuno ba muli raci kun Slima podona Rundi hodonga kun hongkabi Tonga bug sham uninong Wanga kun bisking ba muli ra Chuni yun tun jiji ay thaduana Kavavol pa muljui Kamana Mana mana tota Aku jikra tuk pola Jishok chonatong Chung king no una pang pa muli ra kun kili Kun kili no pa Watati manyo kola Una no ku muli ra Wi itha na dana itia Watayuma kawama huhanek Asyong turong umnipatoga Wana kun bes ching pala mul tongki Smilia, ti ompa do punta krita Do pana o to vas kasa Achyota, wanga kun bistol piki in kunyana Tong patoga smak telia
Prototype swoop engine accelerator with you? 
I was beginning to wonder if you would make it. The race is tomorrow, and my mechanics need time to install the prototype into the swoop engine of our bike. Don't worry. I'm a man of my word. I promised you could ride in the swoop race under the Hidden Beck banner, and I'm still going to let you do that. And I'm even going to go one better. I'm going to let you ride the swoop bike with the prototype accelerator installed on it. Without it, you won't stand a chance. Gaddon, you can't be serious. We need one of our best riders on that bike. We can't let some rookie take the prototype engine into the race. I have to be honest with you. There's a reason I'm letting you take the prototype engine. The accelerator is unstable. There's a good chance it could explode during the race. I can't ask one of my own riders to take the risk. They'll be running unmodified swoops in the race. You'll be the only one using the prototype. If you can complete the track before the accelerator overheats, then you'll win for the Bex. If you die, then one of my other riders could still come through for me. You don't get to be leader of a swoop gang if you don't know how to work all the angles. You can stay here tonight. The mechanics need time to install the accelerator on the engine, so you won't be able to practice your riding. But I've got good instincts. And you have the look of a racer about you. Just try to relax, and in the morning we'll take you to the swoop track. Oh, you 